Have you ever tried to set up a guest network or smart device network, but your router doesn't have that option? Well, with VLANs, you could do just that. And in this video, you'll learn how. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we'll be breaking down VLANs. So what are VLANs? Well, VLANs are virtual local area networks, and they're defined by the 802.1Q protocol. They work like normal LANs, except they're virtually or logically separated as opposed to physically. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you. VLANs are actually quite simple. Let's say you have a router with LAN capable physical ports. These ports are physically separated and therefore any networks on these physical ports are also physically separated. With VLANs, we create virtual ports on top of a physical port. This thereby achieves that logical separation. Well, how do we distinguish from virtual networks and virtual ports? Well, we do so with VLAN IDs. VLAN IDs are those two numbers you see next to those virtual ports. And these numbers can range from 1 to 4094. And so therefore, any traffic that comes from this physical port will be tagged with these VLAN IDs. And therefore, this physical port can carry multiple virtual networks. So then, how do we connect to a specific virtual port or virtual network? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is where our router acts as a managed switch. And as a managed switch, it'll perform a process for us called untagging, which is the reverse of tagging. In the process of untagging, we remove that VLAN ID from the network traffic coming from a physical port, and therefore, it allows a device connected to that physical port to connect to that virtual network. So now these devices will reside on the red VLAN or the blue VLAN. This process works very similarly with Wi-Fi, where your Wi-Fi signal will carry untagged VLAN traffic, and therefore your wireless devices can connect to a specific virtual network that you choose. So what are the advantages of VLANs? Well, with VLANs, you could set up multiple virtual networks on one physical port or on your Wi-Fi. With multiple virtual networks, you could separate out which networks your devices connect to. This is great for guest networks for visitors, for smart device networks like your risky smart devices such as a smart TV, a smart thermostat, smart plugs, or other smart devices. It's also great for video surveillance networks for your cameras and for video streaming servers like Plex. To set up a VLAN, it requires the following. A physical interface such as Ethernet or Wi-Fi, a VLAN ID from 1 to 4094, a name, and a priority, which by default is zero, for best effort. What would this video be without an example? Well, I'll show you how to do this on my Netgear R6080 router running OpenWRT. Let's take a look. In this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own virtual network or VLAN, how you can connect to that VLAN using a physical port and how to connect to that VLAN using Wi-Fi all in OpenWRT on my Netgear router R6080. First, I'm gonna to go to the router interface page And here, I'm gonna then log in. Next, I'm gonna to go to the network tab at the top and then click interfaces. Then I'm gonna switch over to the devices tab and here I'm going to click add device configuration. Our device type is going to be VLAN 802.1Q. The base device is going to be ethernet switch ETH0. The VLAN ID is going to be three, and that's because one and two are already taken up. And I'm gonna leave the device name as is. Then I'll click save, and there you go. You've created your own VLAN. Now let's create an interface for it. Next, we're gonna go over to the interfaces tab, click add new interface, and I'm gonna give it a name of VLAN three for simplicity's sake, but you can choose whatever you'd like. The protocol will be static address, 
I'm going to bridge interfaces and choose the software VLAN ETH03 interface and the wireless network master OpenWRT LAN interface. That's because I want to be able to connect to this virtual network over Wi-Fi. Then I'll click Create Interface, and now I have more options. The IPv4 address will be 192.168.3.1. And just as a tidbit here, I try to make the network match the VLAN ID as best as possible. So as you can see in this third octet or third number, I have three, and that matches the VLAN ID of three. I'm going to choose the net mask of 255.255.255.0, which is also forward slash 24 in CIDR. And this is just your general default network size that you find in many routers. Next, we're going to skip over all these other settings and move over to DHCP server. Here, I'm going to set up a DHCP server and leave these options default as is. I'm going to skip over advanced settings and IPv6 settings and go to save. Next, I'm going to go over to this LAN here, and I'm going to do a quick edit. I'm going to go to Physical Settings, and I'm going to take off the bridge interfaces, and then Save. That's because by default, the LAN is bridged to both of the wireless networks available on this router. And I don't want to connect to the LAN over Wi-Fi. I want to connect to the VLAN that I'm making over Wi-Fi. Then I'm going to click Save and Apply and let those changes take effect. Next, I'm going to go to the Network tab once more and click Switch. Here, I'm going to add that VLAN that I just created so that I can access this virtual network over a physical port. Here, I'll click Add VLAN, give it an ID of 3. On the CPU ETH0 port, I'm going to check off Tagged. This needs to be tagged so that the CPU can properly distribute the VLANs to the other ports. Next, I'm going to go to LAN port 1 and click Untag. Now you'll notice when I do this that these boxes become red. And that's because multiple VLANs cannot be untagged on one physical port. So to resolve this, I'll just go to VLAN 1 on LAN port 1 and I'll click Off. Then when I'm done, I'll click Save and Apply. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go to Network again and click Wireless. Here, I'm going to choose the second interface here, or wireless interface, and this is the one that we bridged earlier when we created that VLAN 3 interface. I'm going to click Edit, and then first, as everything I do, I do with security. So I'm going to go to Wireless Security, add WPA2 PSK encryption, give it a password, and then click Save. Now that I've saved it, I'm going to enable it. And now that we've completed that, we're ready to test it out. First, I'm going to move my Ethernet cable into that LAN port 1 so that I can verify I'm connecting to that VLAN 3 network. Then, I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi name OpenWRT and see if I get a connection to that VLAN 3 network as well. So now that I've given it some time, I'm going to go ahead and try to connect to this router using 192.168.3.1. And as you can see here, I'm redirected to the admin interface page. So that was successful. Now let's try and connect to it over Wi-Fi. First, I'm going to disconnect my Ethernet cable, and that's because I want to be sure I don't accidentally connect to this admin interface using my Ethernet connection. Next, I'm going to go to my settings, go to network, and then look for OpenWRT, and then give it the password that I created. And as you can see, it looks like we got an IP address of 192.168.3.204. So that tells me that we successfully connected to the network. And lastly, just to be sure, I'm going to try to go to this page one more time. And looks like that worked as well. So in this demonstration, I showed you how you can create your own VLAN, connect to that VLAN using a physical port, and connect that VLAN over Wi-Fi. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you like this video and got some value out of it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content around IT tools and technologies, home networking, and home network security, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next one. So tell me, what would you use a VLAN for? I'm curious to know. Go ahead and drop me a comment and I'll be sure to answer. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.